Unit 6, Compost. Compost defined. Depending on your source, you may see compost defined as decayed organic matter or as decaying organic matter, with the main difference being the tense of the verb decay. I would prefer the words decomposed and decomposing, but any of these could be considered correct. So what, it is, what is compost really? Well, the definitions tell us more about where it comes from and what it's used for than what it is. Compost is composed of decomposed and decomposing organic matter, but is much more than that to the soil and to the plants growing in the soil. Compost is a source of plant nutrients. Compost can modify a soil texture, improving conditions for plant growth. And compost creates conditions that promote beneficial soil organisms. <clears throat> what about humus? Most of us, when you hear the word humus, think of it simply as rich soil. But actually, humus is something very different from soil. It is a colloidal substance, which is a component of soil. A colloidal substance is a substance that exhibits special properties. A colloidal substance has a very large surface area versus its total mass. And colloidal substances exhibit electromagnetic properties. This is important, as we'll see in a later slide. Humus is the result of the decomposition of, orga of organic matter to a point where it can be broken down no further. In this state, it can actually remain unchanged for centuries. Humus is usually a dark brown to black color. In the soil, humus has several effects. First, as we mentioned, it's colloidal. Now, certain clay minerals in the soil are also colloidal, and together, humus and these clay minerals form what is referred to as the colloidal fraction of a soil, or the colloidal portion of a soil. The colloidal fraction of a soil is the site of soil chemical and physical activity. This is why humus is so important. Humus also improves soil structure by helping to bind soil microparticles into larger particles, thereby improving soil pore space size, making larger pores that is a space that's easier for plants to extract water from, um, allows for easier um, gas exchange with the atmosphere. <clears throat> now, while humus is largely impenetrable by soil microorganisms, it doesn't in itself add much to the available nutrients in the soil. However, because of its electromagnetic properties, it aids in something called cation exchange. Cation exchange capacity, or CEC, determines how soils can hold and release nutrients. The better a soil's cation exchange capacity, the more fertile that soil has the potential to be when the proper nutrients are present. So, how does compost relate to humus? Well, since humus is a result of decomposition of organic matter, <clears throat> some humus is formed during composting. The process of forming human, humus is called humification. Most compost can be further decomposed or broken down in the soil, and some of that will also form humus in the soil. Compost, which can still be further broken down, is sometimes referred to as active humus, but that's not a technically correct term. This slide shows 
compost, really uh, nicely made compost, fresh from a composter. And you can see in the slide um, that there are bits of organic matter, like leaves, bits of twigs or stems, other large bits, and even area in here that looks a little like grass. Um, <clears throat> obviously, these things can be broken down much further. So this isn't humus that we're looking at. It's compost. But within this compost, there will be some humus. Composting is the process of making compost. Now, it's a natural process, and it goes on in soils all the time and on the surface of soils all the time as well. Um, but when humans do it, we want to accelerate the process usually, get it happening faster so we can make use of it. There are many methods of making compost, ranging from loose piles of plant material to things such as compost tumblers. And we're going to take a look at a few of the methods and discuss some of the pros and cons of each one. Basic composting usually consists of creating a pile of organic matter and allowing it to decompose, usually in some type of bin enclosure. The process can be speeded up by using the proper mix of organic matter and by keeping the mixture aerated so that oxygen is always available to the soil organisms doing the composting. <clears throat> In a bin type composter, aeration can be accomplished by turning the pile using a spading fork or a shovel. Bins are often built three-sided, leaving the front open to make turning easier and for removal when the compost is finished. This slide shows a commercially available uh, bin type composter. Note at the bottom down here, there's a sliding door. This door slides in these tracks on either side and can be lifted up so that the compost the finished compost can be removed. At the top, there's this top which sits over, protecting the compost pile uh, to some degree from uh, animals and insects like fruit flies and other things that might get in there. Um, and if you notice in the sides of the composter, these slots or these indentations which have slots in them. And that allows air to penetrate into the composter. Now this should still be having the top taken off and uh, turned with a, with a spading fork or shovel or something like that to aerate the entire pile. But this is a basic uh, commercially available composter. Another type of composter is a tumbler type composter. Um, easier to use usually, and usually also faster than uh, composting in a pile. It's essentially a horizontal drum or a barrel, um, either sitting up on a support or with an axle that goes through it, and that allows it to be turned. Turning the drum mixes the, the materials to be composted and aerates the composting material. And many tumblers are raised off the ground, so emptying finished compost can be as easy as placing a bucket or wheelbarrow or something under the bin, opening the door and turning it down to dump the compost. This slide shows a home-built compost tumbler, and it uses some bicycle parts uh, to turn a drum. Um, <clears throat> most uh, drum or tumbler types 
aren't made of screening as this is, because screening will allow smaller pieces to fall out of the, as the drum is turned, even if uh, they aren't composted yet. But the screening does allow a lot of oxygen into it. Here you can see there's a part of a bicycle with a little sprocket and the pedal from the bicycle, the chain going around the drum, turn this handle, and you turn the drum. Again, aerating, mixing the materials, doing a, uh, a pretty good job, though again, most of them wouldn't be made of screen material like this. This is a uh, two compartment compost tumbler uh, of a type that's commercially available. Um, up here, this part of it, uh, is the door. Now the door can slide this way out of the slots for it in the top. Notice on the door, one side has a plus sign and one side has a clock. You can slide the door and expose part of the drum. These two chambers are separated from each other. Add fresh material to the side with the plus sign. The side with the clock is left um, to cook or to compost and have the process of decomposing going on. Um, composting really does need at least two uh, bins or two drums or two compartments in a single drum because you need a place to be adding more uh, plant waste and materials to be composted while allowing the other part to finish. If you keep adding more material on top of the uh, one pile, um, it, it's not going to finish the composting process as quickly. It's not going to be nearly as efficient. So this one allows you to let one side cook while adding to one side. When this side is filled, the side that you're adding material to, the uh, door can be slid out, turned around, and slid back in so that the clock is now over here. And now you can empty this side, the uh, other side, and then it'll be empty and ready for adding more material to. Finally, in this section, um, there are specialty composters. These are composters that are made for indoor use. Um, they generally incorporate a heater. The compost needs to be warm uh, in order to work for the process for the soil organisms that break down the material and decompose it. Um, so the uh, composters that are made for indoors typically incorporate a heater and some sort of mechanical device to mix and aerate the compost. Um, such a composter can produce finished compost in a smaller space because of the heater. It doesn't depend so much on the volume of material and the soil organisms to warm up the material. It's heated with the heater. And so even in a small space, it can produce finished compost more quickly than traditional methods, but they're typically very limited in size, suitable only for composting table scraps for a family of two to four. Um, however, they can operate year round inside producing compost even in winter when traditional methods essentially stop. That's the end of section one.